Welcome, everyone. Uh, just in time for spooky season, witness this, the reanimated corpse of the How Long to Beat podcast. I'm host number one, Rick, a.k.a. Ninja Rick, a.k.a. Frank Rick Stein's Monster. <laughs> and with me for this straight-to-DVD sequel are Paula, a.k.a. Pokepaw, a.k.a. Paula Normal Activity, and Alex, a.k.a. Alex5101, a.k.a. The Alexicist. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Wow. I'm glad I spent way too long on this. <laughs> <laughs> Man, how are we doing, guys? We good? Mm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Excited to be here reanimating this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> wow, there was, there was a lot of competition. And thank you for everyone who was interested. It's nice mm. to bring this corpse back with such a party. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's weird how out of touch i feel and how rusty i feel this used to be second nature right let's get away from me as quickly as i can so we're starting with the stuff we've beaten alex why don't you kick us off yeah sure why don't i talk a little bit i've actually beaten a fair bit in the last week which is not usual for me i'm kind of like the play three <laughs> games for like two months kind of person but i uh i beat luigi's mansion three which was a very good time actually it's kind of like has anyone played that one haven't played any of them. Mm. I played a demo during an event uh, here uh, where I live, and it was actually pretty good. Like they let you play every all, all the way to the first boss. Oh, nice! Yeah, it's kind of like the best way I could describe it is it's basically just like a craftsman game in the sense where it's like it's not amazing, it's not bad at all. It's just like real good you know the elements work nicely together it's fun but it's definitely not gonna like revolutionize anything but it was just a, a fun little halloween activity um i also beat professor layton in a diabolical box <laughs> for its long Ooh, time is that that's the second one right yeah yeah that's it's called something different over here. Maybe, yeah, we've got Pandora's box as well. Yeah, I think it was Pandora's box. Yeah, I don't know why they changed it. Like, I'm like, we know what Pandora's box is in North America. I'm like, why, why does it have to be the <laughs> diabolical box? But anyway, um, it also has a different name in Japan too. Like, it's a completely different type of box or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was a fun All game. the boxes. Yeah, right. I mean, it's just, it's puzzles, right? Like, the puzzles in this one are a little more related to what's going on. But I'll be honest. At a certain point, you realize that like all the puzzles are just kind of iterations of each other, right? So when you play the first one, you're like, there are some new puzzles, but you recognize where you're like, oh, that's this puzzle from that one with a different solution. So, you know, it was fine. Um, a solid eight game. Then I played this game called Paratopic. Have you ever heard of this one? Paratopic? No, I can't say I have. Is that something I'm going to find on Steam if I have a quick Google oh, now? Probably, but honestly, this is like, what do I even call this game? It's a... Uh, it's one of those like, oh, I got it for a dollar on sale games. It's supposed to be like a horror. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's got like the PS1 era graphics. Like that's what they're going for. It's like it took me 35 minutes. It's so short, but it's like entirely obtuse. Like it made no sense. And not in that kind of like, ooh, Twin Peaksy kind of way. It was just like, okay, I do not know what happened. And I am not scared. <laughs> so eh, I'd say forget that one. That's a shame because I can totally see why the aesthetic could pull you in. Mm -hmm. It's um, there's something about that era of sort of shitty 3D that is very oddly appealing. No, I agree. Very I, weird. I mean, the issue with it is like you basically just like are in the driver's seat of a car on like a narrow highway where you don't even actually have to drive because if you hit into something it'll just bounce you back so like most of the game is just sitting and you're like what's happening when do i get to the next part and there's no real feedback as to like if you're doing the right thing so you're just like okay <laughs> you just sort of plug away and hope that you're ticking the right boxes <laughs> yeah right those that's 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 what i've beaten what about what about you paula what have you beaten recently Oh, um, about that. <laughs> so I haven't been in any games recently, <laughs> uh, mainly because I uh, university and mm -hmm. um, recently I had like a um, role play session, so that took a lot of time. But also, mm -hmm. like all my time is sinking into Animal Crossing because of the Halloween update. Oh. And yeah, yeah. I had the brilliant idea that I needed to remodel my island. Because why not? Uh, 
so like all 200 or so hours I put like in the original design of the island just mm -hmm. went away with the wind and oh no and I have been trying to little by little rebuild everything get all my fun games get all my recipes and have some fun uh, on the other hand I've also been playing um color I don't know if it's color x Malice or color cross Malice, but it is a visual novel oh, cool. and it's it's not like murder mystery, yes, general mystery. And, hmm. and there's this thing called like X Day, uh, where something is gonna happen and you have you are like a police officer hmm. and you are investigating all these incidents. Oh cool. So is it um, with X Day is it like a Majora's mask loop where you like hit it and everything goes shit? And you have to sort of go back and roll again, or is it just you've got like a set window up until? You have a set window right. up until that day. Okay. Um, and you have like different uh, routes. So in each route, you focus on one of the aspects of uh, all the crimes that have been happening in this place. Mm. And you kind of review like a different one and you get closer and closer to the truth. It's kind of, uh, it, it has been pretty, pretty, pretty fun, but um, the only drawback is that it is like purely a visual novel, so a lot of people I don't think they're gonna pick it up for that one, that, the reason. Gotcha. Uh, but the story is pretty good. Okay, and and to round it out, what's the last game you beat? And and out of sheer curiosity, how long ago was it that you beat it? <laughs> Let me check my how long to beat account because I shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh no, what? Uh, <laughs> Ever dread if you want to feed us some royalties, you know where to find us. Yep. Yeah, for anyone uh, who is listening to this who didn't find it through the actual website. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm just picturing us selling out. This episode sponsored by Manscaped. <laughs> Okay, so, um, oh, I've been like an official novel friends in the last couple of months, <laughs> uh, but, oh yeah, the last non-official novel game that I've beaten was Helltaker, that it, it is a free game on Steam, uh -huh. <laughs> nice. and it is, it is a puzzle game, <laughs> but the premise is, is completely ridiculous, like, uh, you play at, as this guy that is like, you know what? I want an, uh, a harem, and I'm going to go to hell and get like all the demons. And okay, it is yeah. absolutely ridiculous because you navigate this dungeon uh, step by step, and you have like a finite amount of moves uh, to complete the puzzle and arrive to uh, to the end of each level. It was pretty fun. That sounds kind of cool. Do you know is... what? I actually have that installed. I've not got around to it. I don't know how long it'll take for me to get around to it. But there was like a load of hype of what wasn't there? Like at the start of quarantine, people started talking about like hmm. all the free games, and that that happened to like drop at the perfect time hmm. to to hit. I feel like it did anyway. And and how long ago was that, Paula? That you beat that? Um, about that, sir. It's probably like more than a half ago. September 2nd? That's not Do you know what? I was expecting much worse. That's all right. The, <laughs> the, the way you teed that up, I was expecting April. That's not I so mean, bad. I usually try to beat a couple of uh, games every month, and I've mm. been slacking in October. <laughs> I always yeah, find... I've, yeah. I've, no, go right ahead. I've just, <laughs> I was just going to say I've been the opposite. I've... Uh, Particularly with some of the shorter games I've been playing, I always seem to crack out completions every now and again. And, and the quarantine has just been a flurry of activity for me. So what yeah. I've done is I've limited myself just to the past five games I've beaten. Nice. That's a good <laughs> so, segue too. Ooh, um, nice. Go right I, into it. <laughs> on, on the topic of visual novels, segue squared. Um, and this will sort of tie into the uh, game of the month talk later on. So I won't do too much with it. Uh, is Doki Doki Literature Club, mm. which I liked, but I didn't love. 
Um, mm. Similar vein to Luigi's Mansion with you, it felt like a really solid seven. Mm. Um, but I'll, I'll leave more for that for later on. Um, yes. Staying with the the dark horror theme, uh, I played Alan Wake and both of the DLCs for that. Nice. Oh, I I think I gave it a seven, but I think I was probably a little bit too generous. It's um, mm. it's three hours of content spun into ten, or at least that's how I felt playing it. Um, right. The the problem is that the mechanics are so thin mm. because every enemy, even the bosses, go down exactly the same way. It's shine your torch or your flare or your flashbang at them until the shield drops and then shoot them. And right. there's not really any enemy variety. Um, platforming is incredibly limited. The story's good, but they're, neither side does enough to carry the other. So, yeah. um, which is which is a shame because by the time I got to the second DLC pack, there I thought they nailed it, and that was that was an hour of content that, if it had had that quality throughout, I would have probably been really really excited about the game and and really uh, enthused by it. But I I just didn't get that. I thought it was a bit meh. Mm. Yeah, it's fair. It's but it was free. Oh, so fuck. you you, it's. Epic Game Store has been so good to me. All the freebies. And speaking of freebies, segue number three. Um, the third game is a free game called Liquidators. Hmm. So um, it is a short sort of historical puzzle game. So it's about a group of, I can't remember the Russians or Ukrainians, but when the Chernobyl meltdown happened, um, obviously the, the first reactor melted down and Fallout was released. When they evacuated the building, there was a second reactor still running. And because of the way that the, the plant was laid out and where those reactor cores were, um, there was a, a scenario that was very likely where um, that second reactor exploded violently and released fallout across the whole of continental Europe. Um, so these three men went in on a suicide mission uh, to get in, shut down the reactor, and get back out. Um, all of them survived. Two of them are alive to this day. And um, oh. this group of um, freelancers have made a short puzzle game where you turn off six valves in memory of their big achievement. And um, it's probably maybe a better example than whatever that game was you were talking about, Alex. It's probably still on my Steam thing. Uh, Paratopic. Mm. Because it, it's got like a PS1 era sort of pixel filter over the top of everything mm. um which really sort of lends to the vibe it's probably set too strong by default so i i my first attempt was with it at its strongest setting and it, it's sort of difficult to make anything out because it is a real um fast and loose sort of pixelate the whole thing after the fact situation Oh, so okay. they've, they've, they've modeled it in Unity or Unreal with like untextured 3D models and then just filtered the output, if that makes sense. So um, if you turn the filter down, it's much more playable and it, the effect's still just as good. Um, that It only takes half an hour or so to play. I thought it was really interesting. That does nice look. little palette cleanser. Yeah, it's good. It's free. So if anyone's got half an hour on their hands, I would absolutely recommend giving that at least a look mm. um game four of five is inside uh the follow-up mm. to limbo that's another epic freebie funnily enough <laughs> um i i really liked it it's much better than limbo um it does similar stuff gameplay wise to limbo but in my view better the puzzles mm. were definitely better um and i found myself seven or eight times do audibly doing the whole aha thing when i realized what the solution was which there's no greater feeling and i've i'm notoriously bad for losing interest in puzzle platformers sort of a, a third to halfway through uh, the amount of, of that genre of game i've retired for that reason is is quite frankly disgusting um but inside inside nailed the balance um between not being so obvious that you're bored carrying out the puzzle and not being as obtuse that you need moon logic or a walkthrough to get through it. Mm. Um, there's also a really weird third act twist, which <laughs> surprised and impressed me. Yeah, I remember um, that. Oh, there you go. You know what I'm talking about then. Yeah. That 
that was a whole thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Also, with, without giving away anything, it, it really changes the last half hour of the game. So it mm. helps to keep it a little bit fresh as well. Um, and they, they do some quite clever puzzle stuff with that as well. So, yeah, wholeheartedly recommend that as well. Especially, it's bound to go on sale pretty cheap if you missed out on the freebie. Oh, yeah. Um, I think you can get it like on everything too now. It's like everywhere. <laughs> Well, that, that seems to be their release model. They release it on PC, release it on everything else incrementally, and then do something different. So I think that's their most recent game. I don't actually think they've released anything else since then. Not that I know of. I, I remember, I don't know why, I remember playing that game, and I, I think I was left sort of nonplussed, but it was so long ago now that I should probably go back to it. I think I had played it around like a bunch of other puzzle games, and I was just like puzzled out. <laughs> in In fairness, the ending is very open yeah by which i mean it doesn't really end it just stops yeah but that's i think forgivable in experience that short and, and avant-garde so yeah um i i didn't personally mark it down i would have liked something a little bit more conclusive but i'm i'm also not too disappointed that i didn't get that because the, the story is quite open to interpretation from the off there's no dialogue it's all um told through visual cues and, and little mm. um environmental details which easy to get wrong that's another thing that they actually do quite well that's probably worth um commendation mm. um and then the last one that i played was um did have either of you played the original gunstar heroes on yes. one of the old sega consoles oh so I played the hell out of that but yeah <laughs> i i recently played the hell out of the 3ds port nice which um, I'm one of those weirdos that has the 3D on for everything. So happy to report that they did a good job of that. Um, it's quite a subtle effect and it works best with the 3D down quite low because it, obviously they've done a bit of a ghetto job of, of pulling apart the assets. And so on some of the robots, you've got like, if you turn it all the way up, you've got a shoulder pad that's right in your face and then the rest of the body's off in the background. But if you, if you keep it subtle and, le- and let the layers sort of... Um, yeah be quite close to each other it's a really nice effect um there's also a lot of accessibility changes as well so you can play with unlimited lives um you can you can tweak various other settings the only one i turned on um was a mode called gunslinger so rather than um the two weapons that you have being Mm -hmm. subject to what you find on the ground um you can use the left shoulder button to cycle weapon one and the right shoulder button to cycle weapon two um at will Oh, which probably awesome. makes the oh it's amazing so um what what you could do rather than just sort of working with what you'd have is you um particularly for some of the boss battles you could switch to various sort of different things that made them a bit easier mm. um so i i sort of cheesed the um mild spoiler uh side scrolling flying segment towards the end by switching to all homing missiles and then it, it was basically avoid all the shots <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Simulator. look, if you're playing Gunstar Heroes for the story, I think you have your priorities messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I was enraptured by the tale of gold, silver, and his quest for world domination. What are you talking about? Evil gold, it's... silver. <laughs> Man. Also, fun fact, the story of the US version, as was often the case with this kind of game back in the time, mm. completely fucking different to the Japanese story. Mm. which is what the sequel follows on from. Yeah, I mean, they keep gold silver because they're not going to code a whole new enemy, but the, the whole story around it is completely different. And and one of the options that the game gives you is to, to choose one of the two stories. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, for its, for, the Japanese story is still in kanji, though, so it's not as cool as it could have been. Fair, yeah. <laughs> Look, I, no kanji. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it gives you the tooltip, um, and it says this is the one that the sequel follows on from. Um, so I thought, well, cool, I'll go with that. They've given me the option um immediately realized that i could no longer understand it and, and went back and changed it like, but, but the game holds up it's <laughs> it's ball bustingly hard even with all the accessibility stuff but it is really good um for for a game from 93 um some of the mobility options and, and different sort of um movement and attack patterns you can do like the wall jump off the edge of the screen that's loads yeah. of fun um so yeah i'm really glad i played it i really liked it they did a stand-up job with the port 
Yeah, I'll be honest. Um, I'm not like a huge like run and gun shooter fan, but I remember playing that. I think I played it on the Wii, like with the classic controller. I think that's where I first got that's it. That's a thing. Yeah, I think huh. it was, but I like I could be wrong in mistaking where I played it, but um, I just remember playing it so much. Like it was just so much fun. And there's if you like that one too, there's the I think it's Super Gunstar Heroes on the GBA, and it's like that game is awesome. I I love that. Game. <laughs> Yeah, so I've 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 gone on a bit of a a treasure kick recently. So when I was little, um, I had a game called Astro Boy for the GBA. Oh, absolute classic! That game is fun story. We I I bought it in America. I don't think it ever came to Europe. Um, we'd gone um, to Disney World on holiday, and, and on one of the days we weren't in the park, um, we ended up at this little mom and pop sort of game store. Mm. Um, and, and me and my brother both had advances. And my parents were like, you can have one game each. And I hadn't really seen anything I liked. And, and my brother saw some Lego game that he liked the look of. And he was like, oh, I'll have this. And, and my little child brain thinking, well, I best get something too. Just grabbed that one off the shelf. And I was like, I want that one. And uh, fate smiled on me that day because it's a phenomenal game. Um, and so later in life, I've gone, I've gone back to it. I say later in life. Um, <laughs> I've gone back to it. Um, in my twilight years. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the golden decade that is my 20s um i've i've gone back to it realized it was treasure and obviously they've done loads of stuff so mm. um when i got the flash cart for my um modded gba um i put superheroes on that um and then i can't even remember how i worked it out but i realized hang on this is the second game and that's when i found out that i had a 3d port and i uh i bought that nice so in, in a few episodes time, you might hear me talking about the, the GBA sequel. There you go. Yeah, I, I played that there one earlier this year. Actually, I played Astro Boy earlier this year, too. And like, honestly, mm. I think that's one of the best GBA games out there. It's like, and it is punishing. That game is freaking hard. Like, <laughs> it's also tight and fair, though. It's, yes. it's not like bullshit. Yeah. And that's which what, is so important with that kind of thing. Totally, totally. So that, no, that was what I was saying. Like, that's why I loved it so much. Is I was like, this game is kicking my ass. And I love it. Like, it was just like, <laughs> I want to get better. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's an excellent nah. game. Um, okay, so actually, telling, going off of that, I don't know if anyone has any of this, but I'm wondering what people have retired, speaking of games that are hard <laughs> or no fun. I, I've, I've sort of retired to boring one. Actually, no, that's not true. One boring one and, and one god-awful one. So very quickly, the first one is a puzzler called Mochi Mochi Boy. Mm. Uh, for the Vita, it, it's one of those ones where you have to like fill the screen. It, it's like when you've when you've completed Snake and you've got like the full Snake that fills in every block. Okay. Um, and and this is a classic example of me getting bored of a puzzle game part way through. It's got like a hundred levels. I got to forty one. It's like I'm done now. Yeah, that that's just, that seems like always the case with puzzle games too for me at least. Like I'll play like I don't know. I played like Choo Choo Rocket on the Vita, and I was like, this is fun. And then you know, get like part of the way through it and you're just like well i've seen everything i need to see <laughs> yeah yeah and, and particularly with backlogs being what they are i found myself more and more being of the attitude that if i'm part way through a game and i'm I, I feel like i've seen everything it's got to offer particularly non-narrative games mm. I, i'm perfectly happy to say well i'm done with that that's fine mm. there's uh, there's more out there for me um second game is a racer called split second um it was oh, heard on the big one. consoles i'm playing the pc port or i was um it controls like shit Oof. that's why i retired it <laughs> not not to put too fine a point on it the main problem is the drift um is this the one where so, you drift like with a separate stick not on the psp you don't oh oh, oh never mind oh, this is a different <laughs> one sorry i'm thinking there's like a new race game that has a cool drift mechanic anyway i'll look it up later someone tell me what I, that is do you know <laughs> what it, it was on while well, i finished being sarky about it it was on ps3 and 360 so it could be that the, on those consoles you had a separate drift oh no um, that's no this is a totally different game i'm thinking of continue oh, good sir no, maybe not, then, maybe not then. so um the the drift is both too hard to initiate and way too easy to initiate all at the same time uh, which shouldn't be how it be but but that is how it be um so it i would find myself either having to cheese races at the very last second mm. or, or throwing winning positions because i would let's say i'm going around a left turn i'd try and initiate a drift it wouldn't happen and i'd just crash into the right hoarding mm. or i'd be going down a straight 
and I would slightly adjust the car, suddenly I'm T-boning myself on the left hoarding. It mm. it it was horrific. Um, and it, it's a nice concept. The, the whole idea of it is that um, you're on a game show and rather than having like conventional boost or um, power-ups like a kart racer, um, you build up points by drifting or slip streaming okay. other cars. Um, and then you can use those points to set off traps around the racetrack. Um, so maybe there's a construction crane that comes swinging across or like a parked car that explodes, like that kind of thing. Um, and, and that idea is nice enough. I suspect it works better in multiplayer and single player. It was kind of a frustration uh, because it always felt like the AI had it on you. Um, it's almost like blue, syn- blue shell syndrome all the time oh, because, okay. because okay. everyone can activate a trap on you. All the, all the five or seven cars behind you. Um, that would have been forgivable if not also for the shitty drifting, but it's just, Ugh. yeah, it got too much. And I was just like, I'm not a big racing guy at the best of times. So, um, Same. burnout is, Burnout and Mario Kart are basically the two that I get on with. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm only with the arcade racers. So it got to the point where I was just like, fuck this. Um, so that that is on eBay now. <laughs> there you go. What about you, Paula? <laughs> what have you retired recently? Um, I don't usually retire um, a bit of this because like, I try mm. to play what I think I'm going to like in the first place. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, I remember, like, well, look at Paula. She's okay, very the smart. Last, the, last, <laughs> the last game I retired was like six and a half months ago. So Whoa. yeah, like, holy! And yeah. at some point, like, I was like, uh, wanted to play like all the Final Fantasy games, like in the Miracle Order. Mm. And I actually found uh the PlayStation Portable version of Final Fantasy One pretty good. Yeah, yeah same. But then I. Had then I got to Final Fantasy 2. And the way you level mm-hmm. stuff up on that game, yes. Ooh, no good? Yes. Uh, no, not good. <laughs> because, like, uh, what usually happens on RPGs is, like, okay, you level up. You either choose a stat to level up, like, mm-hmm. to Merit Desert Games. Or you get points in all your stats, like, I don't know, in Pokemon, the usual Final Fantasy or Xenoblade or mm-hmm. whatever. Final Fantasy 2. If you want to level up HP, you have to get uh, hit by an enemy. Oh, or no. if you want to, uh, or if you want to level up your attack, you have to keep walking enemies on the head <laughs> with whatever equipment you have. So it was like, I am not doing this i am sorry but yeah. no <laughs> i've uh, i've actively avoided that final fantasy for exactly that reason it's uh it was the 80s man they were still figuring things out so yeah. but that's, it, it's a shame that go on sorry i was gonna say that's kind of what's nice about like going back to these old games right it's like you pop in and then you're just like oh, okay no thanks and like you know little <laughs> little investment you know <laughs> Yeah, it, it's also on a completely other track and just to completely derail the conversation. Why there are so many seven out of tens, I feel, because mm. most games are baseline. All right now. Yeah. Like we we've gotten through the awkward childhood and teenage years. Like it's a mature industry. Most people know what they're doing. Most mm. devs can put a competent game together. Um, no, no one's doing that kind of stuff. Although having said that, apparently the... Um, Someone was talking about another Square RPG on the forums recently where your um, opponent's leveling scales to you. And because it's not well optimized, basically for the first two thirds of the game, you're supposed to avoid combat because otherwise you'll just over level the enemies in the final act. Oh, God. To, to the point that you, you just are making a rod for your own back. So people do still get it wrong. But generally, we're all right now. Yeah, I feel like it's less, though. I mean, because I was going to say, Shenmue 3 does exist. So, like, you know, people still do get it wrong. <laughs> I mean, I'll fight Sh- anyone Shenmue who thinks 3 that's a, good is game. a 1992 game that came out like 20 years too late. Right. Like that, oh, God, I know. But the thing is, even right. in the 90s, they had stuff going well. But you're right. Like, I do think it's like, as far as I look at it, it's usually like, I see like the 90s as like the era of like 2D games just being like totally nailed and then 3D games being just like, a minefield um Mm. and now i think you're right like we've really entered into this time where it's like most of the time although we do have like the shovelware uh issue now too where it's just like there's so much of it 
um, but little beautiful hidden gems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, most big mainstream games, then mm-hmm. let, let's qualify that statement. You will always yeah. have the, uh, the 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 shitty Steam shovelware, and even those and, games are getting better, which is crazy. <laughs> Uh, that's because the pre-made assets you can buy are getting better. That's what that is. Right. Um, <laughs> it's all evolving. The only game that I uh, What about you, Alex? Recently. What have you retired? Yeah, the only one, and, and we'll talk on this more in the games of the month. I, I retired Doom 2, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little more later. Um, it's not because it's bad. There's reasons. But actually, you know what? Why don't we use that to transition into the games of the month? <laughs> we'll, we'll skip yeah, the topic. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, that, that's um, the first of our topics for this week, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's one other, but we'll we'll go into that one after. So yeah, for those who don't know listening, we have a lovely Games of the Month that's run every month on How Long to Beat. Um, and this month was, uh, if I remember, Doki Doki Literature Club, Doom 2, mm-hmm. and Blasphemous, right? Spot uh, on. Yeah, and so I, I have played Doki Doki, which we'll talk about in a bit. I haven't played Blasphemous, but... I started Doom 2 because I was curious, you know, I'm like, I've never really played any of those original Doom games. Um, I'm, I have played like Dark Forces and, and those style of shooters, um, but that, I just, I don't know. The 90s shooters were something I never really got into, and I will say it was fun. Like, I've gotten probably maybe a third or more through the game, um, but... I was even playing on not the easiest level, but like the level above that. And that game was still kicking my ass so hard. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, I'm like, thank the Lord this has like save states now because I was just getting like pummeled. Um, mm. And I got to a point where I was like, oh, the big giant fat guys with the missiles are just killing me in three seconds. And I'm like, I knew that to move forward in this game, I was going to have to get hella good at it. Um, and I was just like, I'm just not interested, you know, like I, I played it, I experienced it. It's fun. It's fast. Um, the weapons are satisfying. Like I, in general, I'm just like, yeah, this is a cool game. Like, um, I, I think it's fun, but I'm just, I just suck. That's really all that comes down to it. <laughs> I just suck at Doom 2. <laughs> it's having, having given you a little bit of preemptive shit for it, to be fair, I'm playing through Doom 1 at the moment. Um, and I've sort of found similar things. I think, I don't know about you, the problem for me is that I've already played Doom 2016 and Eternal. Mm-hmm. And so it feels like a legitimate backward step. It's not like um, if I'd come from Call of Duty or something else and it's like, this is fast. Because you, you're right, it, it it's very fluid, more so than a lot of modern shooters that try for the more realistic approach. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have found, well, to be fair, I played Doom 1 rather than 2. I wouldn't say I necessarily found it all that difficult. Um, I'd say I found it a little bit dull. Mm. Um, I found it a little bit frustrating to navigate mm. because the the level design is okay, but it doesn't really do a great job of of signposting the critical path. Right. Um, particularly when you've got to go and click one switch one place and then go to another place and then track back through the one place to get to the third place. Mm. Um, so yeah, I've, I've just found it a little bit um, rubbish and the map stinks as well. The map's not very good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I doom two was weirdly intuitive for me as like where to go. Like, I don't know why I was just like, Oh, I know what to do. And like, do, 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 do. But yeah, maybe doom two is harder or something, but I don't know. I just kept getting shot, man. <laughs> I was like, it's like no that, that's the other thing it's i don't know about two but one is quite bad for funneling you to press a button and then just turning it into a kill room oh, um I, where like the panels come up from the sides and enemies just pour out yeah, there's a bit of that in doom 2 but i think there's a bit less um but i, I agree with you though like i played doom 2, but you know what's interesting doom like doom 2016 I had the same thing where I loved that game and I was playing, it was fun. And then like halfway through, I was just like, mm, I'm done. Like I had no interest in continuing. And I don't, I don't even know why, mm. like it just pacing wise, that game was almost like too relentless. And then like, eventually I was just kind of like, well, I'm done. I don't like, I knew like to continue was just going to be like, I have to kill these things. It's going to be tough. And I don't know. It's just, and I've talked to people who had similar experiences where they're just like, yeah, I just kind of stopped that game. Um, so yeah, I don't know why though. To be fair, I love 2016. I um, I definitely felt it was a touch too long than it needed to be. 
but I, it never got to the point where I was like, right, I've had enough now. Um, I did have some thoughts about that with Eternal, but that's mm. partly because the platforming stinks. Um, and part partly because the um, oh, I can't remember what they're called the big bad guys with the shield that's up ninety eight percent of the time the guardians or the ancestors or whatever they're called <laughs> someone someone can correct me in the big forums, demon guy <laughs> um, yeah if anyone who's played the game will know what I'm talking about one of them's annoying enough but then in the last couple of levels they will put you in situations where you've got to face two of them no um, and and basically for anyone who hasn't played um. Most of the enemies in the newer Doom games have like a quote unquote weakness mm. or a strategy that's particularly effective. Um, with these guardian enemies, what, what the expectation is, is that you fend off everything else, wait for the specific moment when they try to strike you, mm. and then dodge out of the way and unload on them before they get the shield back up. Mm. Uh, if you try and shoot them at any other time, they will send out a homing ghost dog to attack you. And and they hit hard. It it's really shitty design. <laughs> it really isn't good. And they throw them at you. If it had been one boss, I could have gotten over it. Because yeah. sometimes you get boss design wrong. That's fine. That's a thing. Uh but they, you fight these games eight or nine times, and there's um there's an unlockable somewhere. Because I was trying to get all the unlockables, I ended up giving up. There's an unlockable somewhere where you have to go and, and kill it within like 10 seconds of it mm. showing up or something stupid like that. Um, and basically, the only easy way to do it is to hit them with a BFG at just the right time. Oh, yeah. And because the BFG is so slow, it, you pretty much have to guesstimate when to fire it off. And if it goes wrong, it hits their shield and they get no damage oh, from I the feel BFG. Like we'll have a bunch of people in the forums just being like, oh, oh, you guys are so bad at Doom. Uh, <laughs> I mean, may, maybe not our forums, maybe some other forums. I know, right? Yeah, hopefully our forums will be like, no, we understand. It's very hard. <laughs> what about you, Paul? Did you, have you play fine. any of the Doom games? Um, no, I haven't. It's like, fair. All right, moving on. <laughs> I mean, I get, like motion sickness from first person uh, games and stuff. So like oh. the the closer thing I played to a first person tutor games is like Slime Rancher because I can <laughs> like handle like um too much like um got some bloods and stuff because I don't know. Yeah, just, okay. <laughs> Doom doesn't sound like it would be up your alley. Then. <laughs> it's definitely, <laughs> yeah, definitely not for the motion, those with motion sickness. That game, even me, I was a little bit like, oh, oh boy, <laughs> we're, uh, we're really moving here. Uh, no, I'm, I'm all about that. I play Mirror's Edge unironically and really, really enjoy it. So It's a good game. It's, uh, yeah, it's great. But uh, if you're playing first person park or generally, it, to be fair, Doom Eternally isn't far off that in some of the stuff I actually no. do. Um, um, have you ever experimented with FOV fall, or is it like a, a, a field of view thing? Because a lot of people that get that kind of motion sickness, when they bump the FOV out, um, not only is it easier to see more of what's going on, but apparently it makes it a bit easier on you, motion sickness-wise. Um, what I've tried, and um, this was with Minecraft, because like a couple, uh, a bunch of friends insisted so much uh, that I had to play with them. Uh, I remember modifying the field of view, and producing like the like i think it's called like head bumping so mm. the camera doesn't go up and down as you walk uh, the bob yeah yeah yeah. The mm. bob, yeah that's uh and i somehow managed to at least play like half an hour to an hour at, at a time before i started like feeling sick okay so an improvement then yeah oh because there I, you go I've gone like from uh, calling the ambulance after five minutes to okay, I think I can survive a little bit longer. <laughs> oh, okay, well, that's good. So, okay, wait. So, uh, Doom's not up your alley, but you all up in the visual novels. Have you played Doki Doki? Oh, with that segue, I'm liking this. Yeah, right. Thank you. That is a beautiful segue. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I played Doki Doki Literature Club. I. I think I nope out of there, like, <laughs> in the, I don't remember, it was, like, uh, close to the last route I played, because I, I wanted to play, like, all the routes, mm. but nope out of there, because, like, it was too curvy, 
But I actually mm -hmm. like went back eventually and watch a playthrough of the last part because I couldn't like uh because it wasn't like uh in my hands like trying to advance the game or trying to close the game. <laughs> right. There's something about like watching something that is easier, right? Like when you're playing a horror game, it's just so much worse. You're just like, no, I have to move forward. <laughs> Yeah, you get caught up in it for sure. Yeah, it's funny. I had um, I played this game earlier this year. Actually, I don't even know why. People just always talked about this thing, and I was like, "All right, fine, I'll play it." Um, and so I was like, um, uh, <laughs> I just I don't know. I, I see. I didn't know what was going to happen, but to be fair, I did kind of know that something was going to happen. Yeah, same. Yeah, and I think that ruins it. So like, a little bit. Yeah, and like I, I just. It's fine, but I sort of feel like it didn't really have. I just don't feel like it. It actually had as much of a point as I think it maybe wanted to have. Um, and it's sort of like, I don't know. I just when I finished it, I was like, I guess that was neat and that was interesting, but yeah. I also just don't feel satisfied by it. And I'm like, and I had to read a lot of bad poetry to get to this point, and I'm just like. <laughs> What? Oh, she wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. No, I know. I'm messing. It was fine. Like, I, 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 <laughs> and that's mostly a joke. The poetry was totally fine. Um, but it's just, you know what I mean? Like there was a lot of stuff in it that I just felt like I was like, I feel like I'm sort of like spinning the wheels here a little bit. And I think maybe I wouldn't have felt that way if I had no idea at all what I was getting into. But because I knew something was going to happen, it's like everything that wasn't interesting or like the thing, um, was no longer interesting to me, right? I was like, okay, I know that I'm just like spending time here until I get to whatever sort of twists are coming. Yeah, I, to be fair, if it was free and it's short, if no one's played it by now, I feel like it's on them if you spoil it. You don't need to dance around it. Yeah, I'm fair. certainly going to spoil it. Yeah, all right, let's spoil it. So if you're worried <laughs> about Doki um, Doki Lee spoilers, get out now. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the podcast for you. Or go back to 2000, um, whatever. <laughs> I, I knew about the hanging just because of the memes. Mm. Um, I didn't know about the cutting and I didn't know about what was the third one? What did she do to herself? Um, Natsuki, the little like cute one, quote unquote. Oh, what yeah. She... Oh, it was yeah. what, sorry? I think it was like breaking her neck or something. Oh, yeah, she snaps it herself, doesn't she? Yeah, oh. that's the whole thing. I never saw any um, of that because I was just like, ugh, she's it's like a little it, girl. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that that one didn't throw me. The the one that threw me was was Yuri because even knowing what's happening, it out of nowhere just suddenly like uber seppuku in herself. That that did throw me a little bit. But the the thing is, even if I hadn't known that it was kind of fucked up and where it was going, they're not very subtle about it. No, it, it the writing isn't bad, but it is very on the nose. Um, so I, I read a little bit about it afterwards and, and supposedly the creator was making it a sort of a love letter to the genre and, and the kind of mm. things that you can do with it um, I'm with you Alex I don't think that's enough of a point yeah. really for the for the game and I I definitely sort of shared the same sentiment of, of not quite being satisfied when it finished Um which is a shame because they they definitely if they'd stuck the landing right after um, the bit where you have to go and delete Monica's character file, mm -hmm. I thought that was really clever. Yeah, and that if, is if cool. they'd stuck if they'd stuck something immediately after that, I think it would have been really cool. Yeah. Um, as it was, it was short, it was free, it was like a moment in in the medium, so it, it was fine. But. Yeah, exactly. Like that's part of like I can't really complain because I'm like it kind of brought more attention to visual novels too, which is probably a good thing because I do think there are some pretty cool visual novels out there. Yeah, Paula's doing little <laughs> finger guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know what I mean. So it's like in in that sense, I'm like, oh great, like people want like, and it became that like. I, I also feel like that was really like a YouTube game, you know, like before there were like Twitch games. That was yeah. the one like you know like that game theory channel too. Like I'm pretty sure there was like tons of videos just about this game um i feel like they're ruining among us by doing that right now oh yeah among us is such a twitch game that should be something we talk about at another time too twitch yeah. games <laughs> oh my god um, yeah 
Why don't we move along? I want to um work we're, we're creeping. Well, has any, has anyone played Blasphemous before we go? Oh yeah, Blasphemous. Because I, I haven't. I'll probably have something to say about it next week, but I haven't played it yet. Paul is shaking ahead, Alex is shaking ahead. Yeah. So it yeah, looks let's, uh, super let's cool. jump along. But yeah, um yeah. I'm thinking Oh, it's right up my alley. Yeah, we're gonna try to keep our podcasts, you know, hour ish for all you lovely listeners since we're doing this weekly. Um why don't we um why don't we save that that uh, that first question for next week i think that's a that's a fun one it's fine by me yeah there's one small one here that we talked about because um nintendo did this so this is something i did want to talk about because nintendo has been doing these freaking timed digital releases um and the newest one was like that new the new um the fire emblem game which for those who don't know um the original fire emblem i think it's called shadow dragon and the blade of light <laughs> um yeah, shadow dragon and the yeah, it was Japanese only, um, and so now they're putting out the localization, and I think it's like six bucks in the U.S., something like that. So, I mean, none of us are in the U.S., so pff, who knows what it is for all of us, but uh, <laughs> um, it's coming to the States. Yeah, it looks so because I, I actually use the U.S. bishop, because oh. my bishop doesn't get the games. <laughs> well, then it is totally good for you, then. There you go. But... <laughs> Currency notwithstanding, PSA, um, they actually already remade the game for the DS. Yeah. And both the ROM and the translation patch are freely available at the um, internet destination of your choice. So fuck paying £6 for a Famicom game that they didn't bother to localize the first time around. Get it for free. <laughs> and fuck the timed exclusivity. Get it for free. Exactly. Plus, I hear Shadow Dragon, like, the yeah, the DS one's just called Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, and I hear it's really good because yeah. they, they brought modernization elements from um, from previous, like, Fire Emblem games at that point into it, and, like, they redid the art mm -hmm. and everything, and they, they even added story elements, like, to the prologue and stuff. So I'm just like, yeah, don't bother with this. Just just get Shadow Dragon on the DS and have a good time. <laughs> it's both, the, both the DS ones are quite oh, good. Oh, yeah. Um, I haven't completed like, Shadow Dragon because I actually, uh, at some point I was like, okay, I may want to play the remake first. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that bothers me from the DS games is like, they try to do like the animations like 3D, but they are not really 3D and they look uh... Uh, kind of bizarre because I think like the GBA uh, games for Fire Emblem I think the pixel art there has like a lot of charm, a lot of character. Mm. And that's something I missed, like trying to play the DS ones. Also, I was so mm. mad when Nintendo announced the uh, uh, Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Life was getting a remake because I got to episode 8, I think, <laughs> uh, on an emulator. Oh. And I was like, why do I feel now like, of it? like, I, um, I usually emulate games that aren't like on my target language. Uh, mm -hmm. I usually play games in English. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, games that you can have the physical copy and you can like patch mm -hmm. uh, with a fan translation. And I usually try to be as legal as possible. But they just dropped this and, I, and now I feel. This is gonna sound stupid, but I feel bad about continuing playing the not official thing. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, but you can only play the official one if you buy it in a three-month window, so fuck them. <laughs> oh, that's true. Like, the only reason I'm considering buying it is because of the special edition, because... Oh, yeah. I, um... I am a big fan, like, of art books and, like, uh, collectibles and stuff like that. Like, and so I have, like, all this all that, but... Uh, Oh, the Zelda art books like behind. Yeah, you others. can't see Paula right now, but yeah, she's got an amazing display of Zelda art books and a whole bunch of <laughs> figures. And more importantly, is that a teddy backpack staring menacingly down at you? <laughs> this is the um, teddy doll that came with. Uh, I don't remember is Persona for Arena or Arena Ultimax. Nice. Uh, this is a. It w this was a fun pickup because I picked it up like last year and they had like a sealed day one copy with the teddy thingy. Ooh, I like That's that. pretty cool. For I've, uh, in my store. I've got Ultimax set on my shelf. It's like the last <laughs> Persona 4 game that I still need to play. Oh, see, I, still... I get the hype for the special edition too because that, that is pretty cool, like I have to admit. Um, and like that to me makes sense with being timed, right? Like, yeah, you're only going to make so many of those. But like, yeah, it's yeah. just this 
and like i think it sucks because you know they put out super mario 3d all-stars and that sold gangbusters like that's like the best-selling game this year i think and like so nintendo knows they're like (laughs) if we put a time limit on it you suckers will buy it and it's just like you know what I mean? Like that's the that's what's getting tough, and yeah. like and it's hard because they they're right. Like I feel like they've got like a gun to my head, and I'm like, <laughs> I do want the Mario games, but I don't want to support it. But I do want them. And so you're just like they're like, yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 the question is how far that goodwill winds down because with yeah. with Galaxy and Sunshine and sixty four, mm-hmm. uh, you could print those on floppy disks, and there would still be some schmucks who would go out and buy them. Yeah. Um, with Fire Emblem, obviously, it's a bit more of a niche series, mm-hmm. and you're probably more like, and with it being so late to the party as well, my hope is, my cautious optimism is that you'll find more people who are willing to say, screw that, I'm not, I'm not buying into this business model. Because that, that's what it is. Like you say, it's, it's not a physical thing. It's just a, a very transparent means of constricting supply to try and drive up demand. <laughs> Yeah, it really is. Uh, And I mean, you know, Disney tried this, right? They had their Disney vault. um, And they eventually learned... Yeah, remember Disney um, used to only release their animated films um, for limited time releases. So this was a nightmare in like the 90s or the 2000s. Yeah, so they would like... They'd put out and they'd be like, for a limited time only, you can get The Little Mermaid on DVD. And it was like a nightmare because parents were like, oh, God, we have to go buy it. Um, so there are families that have like just collections of VHSs of Disney <laughs> because they could only buy them at that time. <laughs> but I think Disney actually slowly started to learn that that system doesn't actually really work. And people just started to get frustrated and they just stopped buying them. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, streaming now. So I don't know. I, I think Nintendo will probably face the same realization eventually. Um, I am also kind we of excited. Can for- hope. Yeah, right. Because I do like Fire Emblem, but... <laughs> I've uh, I've still got Awakening sat on the shelf. I'm way behind with my Fire Emblems. Oh. I, yeah, I, I, it's what everyone says. No, it's okay. I burned through them on the th- the 3DS is what turned me into a Fire Emblem like obsessy. Like I've burned through every game on the DS and the 3DS. I've, I've never played the like console versions except for, you know, the new Switch one. But like I was just like, the oh, that was my jam. <laughs> Um, you and everyone else, to be fair, that that seems to be where everyone realised that it was a series and it was quite good. Why don't we? Um, right. Oh yeah, Paul, go ahead. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, it was the same for me that the Fire Emblem 3D is was like, okay, the, let, let's try this Awakening thing out because um, at the time I was visiting my cousin on the United States and it was like the day before I went uh, back home. Mm. Uh, it was new release, Fire Emblem. I was like, well, I guess I'm gonna try this. It was like, oh my god, this is so good. And then, like, Fates was kind of, I think Fates kind of dropped the ball a little bit. But then, mm. the Echoes remake. Oh my god, the Fire Emblem Gaiden remake. Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valencia. Oh, I love that game. <laughs> I love that game. That got quite a mixed response, though, didn't it? Unless I'm misremembering. Yeah, I um, think from people... I think it has to do with the dungeon crawling. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, and also because I think if you were someone who was playing like Fates and, and Awakening and stuff, that introduced like tons and tons of things. Right. And then you jump into what is considered, it's really the second game in the series remade. Um, it's a little older, but that, I kind of liked that. It was like a little simpler, which made it like a little harder, but also, I don't know, I just really enjoyed it. Um, so hmm. wh- why don't we... Um, we're, we're we're slowly creeping up here. I'm thinking, why don't we take a question now? And uh, um, and so on our forums, we have a lovely little questions for the podcast that you can drop questions in. And we've taken one here from uh, from lovely forum friend. Let's talk about Dune, who says, "What part of the world do you live in, and how does that affect your gaming?" Yeah, so uh, I am in the UK. We get mostly everything. We also have the benefit of being English language and also tied to the uh, the 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 European region. So um, <laughs> yeah, we we get mostly everything. Most things come on time. Um, things that we don't get, um, I have quite a lot of American copies of DS games that hmm. never came over. Um, 
So, for example, that's how I got into the Shin Megami Tensei series. I imported um, a copy of Strange Journey. Okay. And uh, that kicked off, yeah, a beautiful, a beautiful love affair with the series that continues to this day. Um, so, yeah, that's me. Nice. What about you, Paula? What's your experience? Oh, so living here is kind of a mixed bag. Because Where I'm is here, from... just for the, for the listeners? Oh, sorry, you were going there. That's yeah, my fault for jumping in. <laughs> oh, I'll shut up. <laughs> it's like, you got to tell us where you're from. <laughs> I am Do from... it now. Shut up, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> He's vanished now from the screen. Rick's gone. He's left the chat. <laughs> He's looking at the ceiling, wondering why is he here. You chose us. <laughs> I've got that that Metal Gear Solid Five audio clip going through my head. Why have we done this? <laughs> Just to suffer. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right, yes, you were saying, Papa. <laughs> Where are you from? I am from Chile. Like that uh, little snake slash warm like country on south america mm. and the thing here is that uh we don't have like official support of any company like at least on the on the physical store end mm-hmm. uh so uh i mean it has gotten better but for example like we have these three big stores and they and their prices can get way up there, mm. uh, especially now since the dollar is, uh, it has since it has seen better days. Um, yeah, like um, the conversion is supposed to be like uh, right now, like one dollar is like around uh, eight hundred Chilean pesos. Oh the stores can charge anything from us if the if the dollar were like a thousand Chilean pesos or a, or more. Uh-oh. I even see like the Final Fantasy a seven motorcycle thingy. Right. Uh, the edition with the with the cloud in a motorcycle figure. That thing, I think, it was supposed to be like five hundred dollars or something like that or three hundred dollars i don't remember <laughs> this thing costs one million chilean pesos and it's like oh, hold on wait hold on what does that even mean <laughs> right I so mean, they're charging three times the price that it actually cost yeah i was gonna say that that's what the price expensive on the states um so i'm gonna post something quickly in the discord just to check that we're talking about the right thing if i'm understanding what you're saying correctly so um what i'm seeing on ebay is it's about 370 pounds which to be fair probably is about 500 dollars. you're about spot on the money there okay uh, three so j- yeah just to give context too then one million chilean pesos at least at the current exchange rate to cad is like 1700 canadian or like 1200 american that's a wow that, that's a crazy conversion that yeah yeah crazy. And it sold out. It sold out. It sold out. Oh my god! Well, this is Nintendo all over again. They know they can because chumps will do it. Yeah, Yeah, but uh, on the other hand, you have like a lot of uh, mom and pop stores that are actually pricing things at a reasonable price. Okay, like which is nice. Uh, Mm. The big stores get some kind of competition. And you can actually, uh, some of the older games that people don't really care about for some reason, or hmm. that has been like, some games, some games just like, right in a, um, like in some storage place somewhere. <laughs> gotcha. And then they bring it to the stores and like, uh, sell it like for 10 bucks. And I actually got uh, the mint condition copy of Persona 4. Uh, for the PS2 that is back there, hmm. uh, absolutely new. It's still in the, in the ball thingy, and I got the day one edition for Arena or Arena Ultimax that had even like the tarot cards. 
Huh. Yes, I see those just behind your head. See, yeah, that's, that's the 41. basically unheard and of then there's, here. Because they, they were a double pack, weren't they? So there was the ones that were with Ultimax, and then I've got like half a set that came with Persona Q. Yeah, but yeah. I yeah. both. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, All right, rub it in. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, the other bad thing is that uh, there's a lot of games that just don't make it there. Like, mm, okay. uh, most visual novels, like Otomes, I haven't seen any store at all carrying the Switch ones. Mm. Um, for the Vita ones, um, I think they stopped with the Vita ones at one of the three big stores. Uh, which I'm not going to name because I don't want to make uh, any kind of advertise- advertisement to their bad practices. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Um, like, uh, we have to import a lot of things, like, straight from Amazon, and it can get, like, pr- uh, super pricey getting mm. some of the nature games. So what I usually do is with a friend, we import stuff together once in a while. Uh, so we can get, like, sort of a good deal there. That's not, that uh, makes sense. And yeah, I think that's it. Like the yeah. PS Five. Oh my god, I don't, I don't want to see that. <laughs> like, the only reason I'm not getting it here because it is not five hundred dollars on launch. Uh, Sony actually said uh, you can charge like, I think it's about seven or eight hundred dollars as a uh, launch price. Oof, yeah, that's so it's like. So that's like five hundred thousand pesos, if not a bit more. Yep. See, yeah, it's um, it, it's not as bad. Like I'm, I'm up in Canada, woo, um, and Canada is basically the United States in terms of what we get. Like it's we get everything they get. Um, it's just that it's a little marked up here, but but actually, so like this is this is the hard thing, right? Is that like if we were to actually compare it to USD prices. Um, we're getting a pretty good deal. Like, um, for example, the Series X, uh, as we know, it's like 500 in the States, but it was um, 599 here in Canada, which is actually like $50 cheaper if you do the conversion. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, I'm not getting paid in USD. So, <laughs> you know, I'm making... <laughs> I'm making Canadian dollars up here. So with like the yeah. new games, they're like... Right now, I've always had seventy nine ninety nine games for like the last, you know, I don't even know, ten years or so. It's they've been seventy nine ninety nine. Uh, I think it was when it was the three sixty generation. That was when games were sixty nine here. But now that games are increasing again, they're becoming eighty nine ninety nine, which is a lot harder to justify uh, <laughs> buying a new game. You're like, oh yeah, do I want to spend a hundred dollars probably with tax on a new game? I don't think I do. <laughs> so like in my region. Um, things like game pass are like really, really enticing to people because it's like, even with conversion, the subscription to game pass is extremely cheap. Um, and it's one of those things that just like, it just makes sense. You know, like I end up doing a fair bit of emulation and stuff, but like modern games, I tend to wait. Like, I think I play all modern games about a year after they come out (laughs) when they've been heavily discounted. (laughs) I feel that it's um we in terms of the whole pricing thing we've been sixty pounds well fifty pounds uh, for like two console generations now but if you're smart shopping um, particularly with pre-orders generally it, it's only ever going to be forty or, mm. or a touch above but it's the same with us things seem comparatively very cheap in the US but there's also salary disparities and, and in terms of real income it's often pretty similar. Yeah. So it's one of those things. One thing I wanted to ask as well, Paul, do you have a lot of mom and pop gaming stores then in Chile? Oh my god, yes. Like hmm. okay. I happen to live uh in the capital and just one bus stop away, there's this place uh by a metro or something. And it is this subterranean place full of mom and uh, mom and pop stores and you can get like refurbished uh, PS Vitas or PSPs and stuff like that hmm. you can get sec- uh, second hand games uh, you can get old games but new 
and that's one of the advantage of living here uh and you also like there's some stores that carry like uh european releases us us releases and japanese releases oh okay uh so if if the console you're collecting for or you're playing games on is region freeze like yes if it's you're bad, in it's a little bit sad Okay. It's um because it was interesting hearing you talking about them all because basically growing up I've witnessed the slow death of uh, of mum and pop gaming stores in this country, which is kind of sad. Um, you Same. you basically have one chain store that's focused on new games and consoles. Um, there's one chain retailer of used games and DVDs and CDs and things like that. And and outside of those you're basically looking at eBay and Amazon and, and various sort of boutique online retailers. Um, so I, my, my first call, there's, there's a UK one called 365 Games. They generally do pretty good deals, but mm. it's the the options for buying physical, new, and even used are fairly limited in terms of physical, which is a shame. Um, I'm not sure I'd trade it for your accessibility and conversion rates, but, but still. Yeah. Um, it's very similar Go here too. No, I was just saying it's similar here. Like we we have some mom and pop used video game stores. Like the used market mm-hmm. definitely has lots of different, but even then, not that many different stores. Just some pawn shops and stuff. And honestly, their prices are like kind of whack most of the time. Um, what I have found a lot of success here is like if you go into one of those stores and you buy a number of games, you can get like extremely good deals because they're willing to cut. Like you know, you can you can bargain and stuff. Um, which is right. really nice, but in general, like it's just it's kind of a tapped market, you know. Like people, yeah. ha- Like there's a lot of collectors in, in, and they'll just buy up everything that's good, um, and then the stuff that's like actually valuable, no one's buying because it's so expensive. Um, and you have the digital squeeze on the other end. It's the yeah. digital the, gaming the space isn't there anymore. Yeah, um, yeah. It pandemics help that, no doubt. Yeah. So, would we like to uh, close things off with a little game? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's this I hear? <laughs> yes, we've come up with a wonderful little game um, that has a wonderful title called How Long to Beat. <laughs> I wonder how we came up with that one. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it's not based on anything at all. <laughs> Um, so we have this game randomizer website here and what we're going to do is we're going to generate a random game Uh, we're going to ask the title and then uh, we're each going to guess how long we think it takes to beat but there's a one little wrinkle that uh, Rick introduced that is very wonderful Um, we've got a gambling system here where and how how long to beat there are three basic categories right you've got your main game only your main game plus extras, and then your completionist time. And then there's the all styles, but, you know, that's no fun. We don't need that. Um, we just work with these three. And the way this will work is that you can guess one time, and if you guess it within one hour, you'll get one point. You can guess two times, and if you get them both right within two hours, you'll get three points. Or if you guess three times within five hours, better margin of error, you'll get five points. But the thing is you have to get all of them correct. Um and we'll be keeping track. A little bit of risk reward up in here. Yeah. So, um, without further ado, let me hit the generate button and find what game we're talking about today. Ooh. Uh, I think we said we said no games this year, didn't we? Just yes. So that we've got like a decent enough time um, for people to submit times. Go yeah. on. You said ooh. This game is not this year for sure. Uh, this is the <clears throat> original Resident Evil. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so not not HD and not the remake. Uh, this is the original Resident Evil. <laughs> I am going to jump straight in there, both feet first. Okay. I was planning to do the the hair in the tortoise strat and just pick one time and hope that you both gamble, but I'm feeling I'm feeling saucy today, so okay. I'm going to go for two. Mm, um, all right. I I am going to say main only. Seven hours. Okay. And I'm going to say main plus 13 hours. Mm. I'm going to price and write you. Um, and say, <laughs> well, see, I, good I, game, good game. Yeah, I, I'm thinking, but I'm thinking main game is more like 
Ooh, but yeah, within two hours, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I think the main game's eight. Uh, I, I feel eight hours. That's that's what I'm feeling. Um, and I I think main game plus. <sighs> yeah, you know what? <sighs> you know what? I'm gonna say. Yeah, thirteen as well. I'm going with thirteen for that one. You barely prices right me. I barely did. Like, Maybe I'll go fourteen. Then. Got, I'm going to say fourteen you, you, for Mega you, Plus. <laughs> oh, okay. You're changing the homework ever so slightly. Yeah. So, Alex. <laughs> so I'm gonna gamble. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And say uh, seven and a half hours main. Okay. Uh, fifteen hours main plus and twenty hours one hundred percent interesting okay okay my gut feeling is that your 100 percent is going to be way off because there's like different rewards for completing it seven or eight times but you've you've committed to it now so you said seven ready? and a half <gasps> oh hang on so, okay yeah did, did you did you say seven and a half 15 and 20 Paula? uh yeah i said 20 but i kind of want to pull it a little bit up but i don't know how safe is to do that Wow, you're tied in now because I think Alex has already opened the window. Well, no, it's okay. I mean, she okay. can say whatever she wants because it's fine. But okay, so can you repeat what our times were there, Rick? So I said main game seven, main game plus 13. You said main game eight, main game plus 14. And I've got Paula down and we can always change this if the audio was different after the fact. Main game seven and a half, main game plus 15, 100% 20. So. Like 100% to 20. Five. 25 okay okay uh, if you try to guess the, the three of them it's like uh, uh, um how much was the we will run for that one five hour yeah you're right you've got yeah. more you've got more margin for you error you're right so we all suck um, <laughs> 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 um <laughs> but not too bad <laughs> the the main story on how long to beat is six and a half hours okay Yes. Yep. So okay. so far so good. But main plus extra is eight hours. Oh, oh right. It's eight hours. I was like, no. And All then right. completionist. So this is funny. Actually, you were a lot closer, Paula. Your first guess. Completionist is fifteen hours. Why did I listen to Rick again? <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason I didn't guess a hundred percent. And the thing I is, was not confident. I feel like the Resident Evil remake um is probably different like uh oh this is interesting so if we had done the the remaster fascinating so with the remaster um the the times were 11 hours for the main story 14 for main plus extras and then 28 for completionist so hang on have gotten the points there yeah right. if you if yeah. you amalgamate the times me and paula are in the money <laughs> if you amalgamate them yeah all right <laughs> uh <laughs> So it looks like none of us succeeded this week. <laughs> that, that is a winning start to this new format. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. If we really mess up in the next couple of weeks and no one ever wins, we'll we'll readjust as we go. But uh, well, we can always do it as we re-roll until somebody gets a point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but let us know in the comments. Yeah, let us know on the forum <laughs> what you think about this topic and if you guessed it right or wrong. <laughs> Uh, don't forget to click like, subscribe, hit the bell, turn them on. <laughs> turn For some reason, I feel like people are just more uh, prone to say like, no, just give it like one game at a time because they like to see us suffer or something like that. Yeah, probably. Wow. They're like, yeah. No, you <laughs> keep the, the more rules we hard. Roll, the more we're likely to suffer, yeah. to be fair, because we're going to get that more is. wrong. Yeah. Statistically speaking. All right. Well, yeah. I think that's it, huh? You want to take us out there, Rick? <laughs> All right, then. Well, um, have a great Spooktober and we'll see you in, in the penultimate month of the hell year that has been 2020. Yeah. So people know we're going to try to do these weekly and we'll yeah. find Give out. Give you one bright spot to your week at least. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. All the best till then, guys. See you later.